There it is. All right, somebody made a good recommendation for me there. Good evening, everyone. I want to welcome you to the first North Oakland Concert Band performance of the 2024 and 25 season called A Splash of Colors. We are very happy you've joined us this evening for some very colorful music. My name is Paul Riker. I'm the president of the NOCB. I would ask that you please take this time, this moment, to silence your cell phones for the duration of our performance. This season, we are going to be taking the time to showcase our donors before our performance, as you saw on the slides above. It's because of donors like you that we are able to keep covering our growing operating costs. So I would appreciate it if you would consider making a donation today so you can become a part of that list. You can even sponsor a concert, rehearsals, or board meetings if you so choose. We accept cash, checks, and electronic payment via Zelle or PayPal. You can use the QR codes on the projected slides that you saw, uh, either before the concert, which you missed your opportunity now, or during our intermission, we'll put them back up for you. You can also find uh, several printed pages coming in the door where you can scan those QR codes if you need to. Uh, if you prefer to use cash, you can also make a donation into our basket uh, at the receiving table out front. That will be available during intermission as well. Uh, and I know that uh, we appreciate any gifts you can make. Okay. Uh, and if you also notice, the new thing that we're doing this season, including the slides, is that we are going to be trying to offer a raffle item. Uh, for anyone making donations prior to a concert, we are also going to be doing that during intermission. Uh, if you did make a donation and for some reason you missed a ticket, please just come to the table during intermission and get one. Uh, what I'll be doing is selecting one of those tickets after the first piece of our second half uh, while we're setting up some things on stage. So stay tuned for that. Keep your tickets handy. We are going to be giving away four gift cards to G's Pizzeria. Uh, they're $25 each, so I think most of you will probably make back what you've invested, so that'll be great. Uh, the other thing I wanted to make sure you check into on your way out the door today, or even be during intermission, we have business cards that have our full concert schedule. I saw a lot of you getting those walking in. But if you want a quick, handy reference that you can store with your calendar and your purse, in your wallet for all of our upcoming performances this season that has a front and back of all of our concerts. So it's a, a good way just to keep that, re keep that handy, be ready for all of our concerts this season. Uh, I also wanna, wanted to make you aware of our upcoming concerts. Uh, we have a fireside Christmas uh, at the Christ the Redeemer Catholic Church, and that's gonna be on Friday, December 13th at 7 p.m. This is a great event to get yourself ready and into the holiday spirit, um, not only because of the setting, which is, is a beautiful sanctuary at Christ the Redeemer Church, but also uh, our musical choices are going to really get your spirit flowing. And then I also wanted to mention we have a fundraiser upcoming. Uh, that's going to be uh, in November, and November 10th, excuse me, at 6.30 p.m. at the Orient Center, also in Lake Orion. And this event it features our Dixieland, uh, North Oakland Dixieland Band, excuse me, and they are all the proceeds from that event, um, which you know, it's a great event, they're great performers, good jazz music, all of those proceeds go directly to the NOCB, so I'd recommend you jump in for that event if you would like to hear that music and want to support the band. We're going to be having refreshments and drinks uh, as well, uh, all free to you. So, very good upcoming performances, and of course, this evening, uh, I hope that you'll enjoy. Now that I've covered some of our business items, I'm going to cover uh, our first piece that we'll be playing, which is called Symphonic uh, March from Symphonic Metamorphosis, and it is uh, by Paul Hindemith. So, in early 1942, uh, Hindemith was discussing plans for two ballets to be choreographed by Leonid Massine one of which was to utilize the, the music of Carl Maria von Weber. The composer spent only a few days working on the Weber ballet when he rejected the idea, but the work was not wasted, since it formed the basis of the symphonic metamorphosis, which he composed in the summer of 1943, turning the Weber pieces into a suite. The second movement, the march, 
which you are about to hear, is drawn from Weber's incidental music for Schiller's translations of Gatzi's Turidote. Hindemith himself asked Keith Wilson, a colleague at Yale, to transcribe the march for concert band in 1960. That's the piece you're going to hear tonight. As you will hear, the form is somewhat different from that of a standard march. And now, the march from Symphonic Metamorphosis by Paul Hindemith. Please welcome our conductor, Annette Klein, to the stage.
Am I on? There we go. I'm Robin Myers. I'm obviously a member of the flute section, and I will be your MC for the rest of the program. Before I begin, I understand that there's somebody very special to me that's in the audience. It's my old high school band director, John Boren. And I want to reach out and say hello. Because of you, I am here today. And his daughter is another flutist in my flute section. So what goes around comes around. So thank you so much. Our next composer, W. Francis Macbeth, took this work's title from the last seal in the book of Revelations. The seventh seal, being a culmination of the first six, denotes the emotional program of this work. The first movement is thematically based on the day of wrath. Movement two is a treatment of a three-note interval sequence that has been associated with the pathos through the centuries, including in Beethoven's Pathétique Sonata, Dido's Lament by Purcell, and from the first movement of Tchaikovsky's Pathétique. The last movement is built around the first measure of the Moravian hymn, Surely He Hath Borne Our Grief by John Antis. It was commissioned by Kappa Kappa Psi and Tau Beta Sigma on the occasion of the 25th anniversary celebration of the founding of Tau Beta Sigma. And I'm curious, I'm going to ask the band this question, with a show of hands, how many band members were members of their collegiate chapters of these music service organizations. I'm one of them. All right. So we've got a few TBS KKYers out there. With this commission, these two national fraternal societies for young men and women in collegiate bands continue their tradition of encouraging the contemporary composer to write for the modern concert band. And now, The Seventh Seal by W. Francis Macbeth.
summer of 2023, our next composer, Andrew David Perkins, was a fortunate recipient of an artist residency on Mackinac Island through the Mackinac State Historical Parks. Boy, a tough job, huh? He had visited the island several times throughout his life, but the lengthy stay allowed him to delve deeply into the history and the anthropology of the island, lean, learning about its ancient inhabitants, historical military importance, and the role of a summer holiday destination for American and European aristocrats in the 19th and 20th centuries. From the many interactive historic museums and installations, to the abundance of old world charm, like no cars on the island, he couldn't help but fall in love with the island all over again. He chose to express his fondness for this rare and wondrous place through a suite for concert band focusing on several significant locations. Paying tribute to the history of Mackinac Island, the suite is divided into three movements. Number one, Fort Mackinac, which is a military style march. Movement two, Arch Rock, a lyrical movement built around the 18th century folk song, Shady Grove. And movement three, the Grand Hotel, of course, which is a playful carousel style waltz. The Mackinac Island Suite was commissioned by the Unionville Seabuing Area High School Concert Band for the 2024 Michigan Music Conference. We conclude our first half of the program with Andrew David Perkins' Mackinac Island Suite. Please hold your applause until the end of the third movement. And from after this piece, we will have a 10 minute intermission.
I know it's that last minute rush for that raffle ticket. <laughs> Our next piece, subtitled The Age of the Saxophone, oh, I'm sorry, the Jazz Concerto for Saxophone Quartet and Concert Band. Um, and the subtitle of it is The Age of the Saxophone, and it was composed by Bill Holcomb and was dedicated to the Texas Saxophone Quartet and the United States Navy Band Commander Philip H. Field, Music Director. This afternoon, we have the distinct pleasure of presenting four very talented saxophonists from our very own sax section in the NOCB, better known as Light Reading, Quartet. Joanne Isaac is the soprano saxophone that has been playing sax for over 20 years and has been gracing the NOCB with her talents for over 10 years. She is co-founder of the group and in addition to her musical talents, she works as a leader in data science at Ford Motor Company. She has a husband and two beautiful children. Joe, Bego Joe Begovich is their alto saxophonist and began playing saxophone in the Pontiac school system and went on to study computer science at MSU and then took an 18-year hiatus post-college from playing. Joe is a great example of it is never too late to pick up your instrument and start playing again. He rediscovered his love of music in 1996 in the Oakland College Community Band where he met his quartet partner, Rob Park, and the rest is history. Rob Park is their tenor saxophonist and began his musical journey in the public school system in Madison Heights, and he never stopped earning degrees in music education and saxophone performance. Rob has directed bands and taught privately and resides in Sterling Heights with his wife and four grown children and runs his own construction business. The fourth and final member is Mark Tarabusi, their baritone saxophonist. He, along with Joanne Isaac, as mentioned before, co-founded their quartet in 2010 and has played with the NLCB for many years and is our co-principal clarinetist. Mark holds degrees in music performance as well as a woodwind specialist. Mark's specialty is musical theater performances and has toured with musicals across the United States and Europe and lived in Germany for 10 years. Please welcome our very diverse and super talented saxophone quartet light reading to the stage to play for you the jazz concerto for saxophone quartet by Bill Holcomb. And also please welcome our director, Annette Klein, back to the stage and over in the corner. Please welcome John Hill on track set.
despite being commonly attributed to Shostakovich, and based on his music, the Suite by Variety Orchestra Number no. One was arranged by Levon Atomian, a composer, arranger, and artistic administrator born in Russian Turkestan. They met at a meeting of the All Russia, Russian Society of Composers and Dramatists in the early 1930s. Atovian subsequently became part of Shostakovich's circle of close friends, and later he was regularly entrusted with arranging concert suites of Shostakovich's film, film music. Although made with Shostakovich's tacit approval and based on his music, Atomian's arrangements incorporated extensive alterations and newly composed material. No manuscript score for the suite exists in Shostakovich's own hand. Its instrumentation, movement, arrangement, and generic titling of movements also do not correspond with Shostakovich's style. No precise date for the suite's composition can be ascertained, but it is believed to have been composed in the late 1950s, sometime after 1956. So we present to you now the first movement of this suite, entitled March, um, and it's from the 1940 comedy film Adventures of Korzenkina.
We conclude our concert this afternoon with symphony number no. one, A Ghost Story, which is a symphony in four movements of which we will present the last two. The movements follow the narrative of a composer who has passed away and is told from the point of view of his widow. The third movement, Midnight, begins quietly as the clock begins to chime at midnight. The spirit of the composer stirs again, once again visiting the widow. What follows is an explosion, and I mean explosion, of rage as the composer screams against the injustice of his death. A savage dance follows as the spirit runs rampant through the house, unable to control its emotions. Furniture flies, glass breaks, and the incessant knocking of here, here, here echoes through the house. This movement also features a wonderfully malevolent instrument, the Aztec death whistle. And every time it goes off, I jump out of my chair. <laughs> the first movement, or I sh I'm sorry, the fourth movement, Ascent, is performed beginning immediately as the third movement ends. The dirge from the beginning has been transformed and is now presented in a hopeful setting. Dawn breaks, begins to break across the horizon, and warm light begins to drift in through the windows. The spirit finally accepting its fate and appears one final time to the widow. They share one final ghostly embrace before the spirit ascends, leaving the earthly plane forever, moving on to whatever awaits on the other side. The symphony owes a debt to both symphonic and cinematic traditions, particularly those of horror films. The composer states that it gives him hmm, great pleasure to bring a little bit of the dark side to the concert hall, and that we will do. We realize you could have spent your afternoon in other ways, but we are humbled that you chose to come out and support us for hopefully an enjoyable afternoon of music in the spirit of the fall season. Please make sure you check us out on our Facebook page and our website for future events and concerts, with the next one being our ever-popular Dixieland Band fundraiser on November 10th at 6.30 p.m. and our December Fireside Christmas at Christ the Redeemer Catholic Church on Friday, December 13th at 7 p.m. Note the day of the week changed this year from Sunday to Friday night for that Christmas event. We appreciate any and all donations you have made or will make in the future, either in person or using our QR code that links to our website. Thank you and have a safe drive home. And we present for you the final piece this afternoon, movements three and four, Midnight and Ascent, from Randall Standridge's Symphony Number no. One, A Ghost Story.